hi everyone and welcome to this uh, video again this video will be about uh, the determinants also just refresh your memories of the last video the last video i talked about the determinants how to find a determinant uh, of a matrix two by two or three by three we talked about minors of a matrix and cofactors of a matrix please review that uh, video and uh, watch it more and more time it's needed then we found the determinant of a three by three matrix by using the first row expansion and the shortcut so watch that video it's all there then uh, i said you can find the determinant of a matrix by any uh, expanding it by any row or by any column so i throw expansion this is the formula for the determinant know that formula and J Troy expansion, this is the formula for the determinant. So then we talked about the triangular, diagonal, and the lower and upper triangular and diagonal matrices. And we said the determinant of all these three matrices is just the product of the entries in the diagonal. Then I went the proof of that, uh, over the proof of that by using induction, please watch the last video. Then I said the determinant of A is the same thing as the determinant of its uh, transpose. That's one of the properties of the determinant. And uh, please know the proof and do some search for the proof of that theorem. In this video, we're going to talk about the effects of elementary row operation on a determinant of a matrix. So just remember, we had the three legal row operations. The first one was multiplying a row by a constant. When you do that, alpha times the determinant of A equals to the determinant of B. So the determinant of A will be one over alpha times the determinant of B. I put a simple proof here. This is the i row of matrix A. We multiply that by alpha, and that becomes that. The determinant of A expanding is along that row the i row expansion is given by this formula the determinant of matrix b if i call this the matrix b is given by alpha times all we did is that alpha times i a k times c i k uh, a i k times c i k so this is i can take that alpha out it's just alpha times the determinant of b therefore we can say the determinant of a is one over alpha times the determinant of b second row operation when you permute two rows or you interchange two rows from a and then in a and you get the matrix b in this case the sign of the determinant changes so you can prove that by induction i started that proof and uh, i just let you do the last step of that so the first one you can show it's true for n equals to two. If you take a net two by two matrix A, B, C, D, the determinant is A, D minus C, B. So if you permit row one and row two, that's the matrix. The determinant of B is going to be C, B minus A, D or D, A. And that's minus the determinant of A. Step number two of the proof. The induction we said suppose is true for n uh, a matrix k minus one by k minus one matrix so we suppose that this is true when you in when we permute two rows and you can go to step number three by using this you can show that is true for n equals to k what does that mean if we taken k by k or n by n matrix and permit two rows and get matrix g we have to show that the determinant of A is minus the determinant of G. How you do that, I let you finish this problem. Find that the determinant of F by expanding along two rows, but uh, along a row, but other than row I and row J that you permitted. Just pick a row K. So please write that down and try it and use this supposition and uh, see if you can get the result last row operation if you multiply a row by a constant and add it to another row and we change that row j nothing happens to the determinant determinant stays the same so and 
Also, please uh, check the proof for that one also. So three row operations, when you multiply a matrix by a constant, uh, the row by a constant, the determinant is gonna become one over alpha. If the constant is alpha, and if you permute two rows, you change the, the sign of the determinant. And if you multiply a row by a constant and add it to another row, then nothing happens to the determinant. Here, I went over an example. So when you use row operations to find the determinant, what's our goal? Our goal is to do row reduce a to get a triangular matrix because it's uh, always easy to find the determinant of a triangular matrix. All you have to do is to multiply the entries in the diagonal. So I took that matrix. You permit row one and row two to get one here. We know when we did that, the sign of the determinant changes. So you just put negative one to remember. Then I wanted to make that zero. So you do negative two R1 plus R3, and that's going to change R3. Nothing happens to the determinant. So negative one is right there to remember. Then I wanted to make this one. So you divide, we multiply row two by one half to remember what happens to the determinant, write that is negative one over one half. And the final, uh, the row, our final row operation is to make that zero so we can get our triangular matrix here. So then I'll, what you do is negative one R2 plus R3 and nothing happens to the determinant. And negative one over one over two is just negative two. Now we have our triangular matrix. The determinant of that matrix is just the product of the entries in the diagonal. And of course, don't forget that negative two. And if you multiply all that, the answer will be negative one. So, and uh, I put this theorem for you, the determinant of alpha is the same thing as alpha to the power of N times uh, the determinant of A. This is imagine multiplying every single row in the matrix by alpha. So that's why you have that. And that's remember this term and try to check uh, the proof of that also. Now in the when I you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna talk about the determinant of elementary matrices. So please uh, watch this video a couple of times and try to finish that uh, proof and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and have a great day.